Welcome back, Rec Room Creators. I'm Marisa, and today we're going to go over player properties and rooms, too. If you're looking for a way to enable flying or just voice roll off in your rooms, this is how you do it in rooms, too. Player properties enable you to add abilities and attributes to a player and adjust their settings. To replace roles, you can use a combination of tags and player properties. Player properties offer a lot more options. This means you have more options when adjusting speeds, volumes, and much more. Let's dive into this a little bit more. To start creating, you're going to need your maker pen. You can find your maker pen in your backpack. You can find those properties in your palette. Go to search and select circuits, then player, then properties. You can also just search directly for properties, player get or player set to locate all of those property chips. Let's say we want to allow a player to fly in this room. Here are some different options for flying. Player definition board. You can toggle on flying in the config menu. Player get is flying. Detects whether a player is flying or not. Player get can fly. Whether or not a player has the ability to fly. Locomotion request fly start. Initiates player flight. Locomotion request fly stop. Stops player from flying. Player set can fly. Sets whether a player can fly or not. These chips are ways to get and set the can fly player property. You can find similar properties for speed, jump, and voice roll off. This is essentially a simplified version of how roles worked in rooms one. So they now work together in a more expanded capacity. This gives us a lot more options to create really unique experiences. So let's enable flying for all players in our room. We will need a player definition board here. Now let's configure this. Scroll till you see player properties. You can view all the locomotional properties here. Let's toggle on can fly. Then scroll up and set the toggle here active. If we want all players to be able to fly in our room, we need to activate this toggle since we can have multiple player definition boards in one room. Now, not only can you configure this board, but you can also edit and adjust even more options. If you edit the locomotion board, you can add even more options to a player such as double jump, etc. There's so much cool stuff in here. In this scenario, we want players to walk into this area and suddenly gain the ability to fly. We are going to need get local player, trigger zone, it has tag, remove tag, add tag, player set can fly. This chip understands the player entering into the trigger zone. Let's scale up this trigger zone here because we want to fill this whole area and manipulate the trigger zone to fit this area. So when the player walks into this area, they will have a tag applied. In rooms one, roles were used, but in rooms two, we use player properties. You can use a combination of tags and player properties to group players, change group settings, or change individual settings. This chip has execution ports. Chips that have execution ports, we also call this exit for short. It will execute data when the execution signal is received and chips with exit ports always take in data from left to right. Chips that don't have execution ports will execute data when any input is read. Data is always read from right to left. Chips with execution ports always read data from left to right and chips without execution ports always read data from right to left. So these ports are outputs and these ports are inputs. Data moves in and out through these ports. So in this case, when a player walks into the zone, that will cause the chip to do what? Well, read all data inputs from top to bottom. Then it's going to do the work. Then set all data outputs. When a player enters into the trigger zone, we want that information to execute to this if has tag execution input. Let's use our connect tool in our maker pen menu to connect this exit port to this exit port so that the data can be ported over to the if has tag chip. Get local player identifies the player interacting with the trigger volume. Local player refers to identifying a specific player within a multiplayer environment. So this chip has a target port and we want to know if a player has a tag. So let's connect the get local player target chip to the target port on the if has tag chip. The if has tag chip, when a player enters the zone, 
This chip detects whether the player has a tag or not. The data will start at the input port, then the chip will, well, read all data inputs from top to bottom. Then it's going to do the work. Then set all data outputs. Since this is an execution chip, it will read data from left to right, starting to read inputs from top to bottom. We begin with a player entering the zone, triggering an execution here. This chip then reads the target, in this case, the get local player, to identify the player who entered the zone. It checks whether the player has a tag or not. However, it does not add the tag itself, only detects whether the player has it. Now, let's add the tag apply. This tells the chip which tag to look for. So that's why we are using an if chip. In this case, if a player has tag, do this. If the player does not have a tag, do this. And then outputting that data from the exit to the add tag input exit chip when a player enters the trigger zone without a tag. It will remove the tag if the player enters the trigger zone again, as the if chip checks if the player has the tag and then removes it with the remove tag chip. It will remove the tag if the player enters the trigger zone again, as the if chip checks if the player has the tag and then removes it with the remove tag chip. So if the player who has entered the zone has the fly tag, this chip will read if the player has the fly tag using the get local chip then removes the tag. In this case, we want to remove the fly tag from the player. So let's add fly here. Note, this can be any tag you want. So we're gonna do the same thing with the add chip. So if a player enters the zone and does not have the fly tag, this chip will add that tag to the player. So after the execution completes, we want to output the execution to the player set can fly. It determines whether the player has the tag or not, which determines if the player can fly or not. So the chip player set can fly. This sets whether a player can fly or not. This setting is local to the player. We're going to set the player set can fly to false, such as clicking on it with our connect tool on can fly port here. When players enter back into the zone, the tag is removed and sets the chip player set can fly to true on can fly port when the player's fly tag is added. Now let's test it out. I can fly now, great. And entering back into the zone uh, turns off my fly, awesome. Now these colors mean different things. Let's go over them. Red stands for true or false. Purple are strings, which means just text. Yellow can mean a lot of things, but in this case, it means the player or object we want the chip to target. Great, so let's go over this again. So when a player enters the zone, our if chip checks whether the player has the tag. If they don't have the tag, it adds the tag. If they do have the tag, it removes it. This action determines whether the player can fly based on whether they have the tag or not. So that was a good example of how we were able to use player properties. Here is another quick example of how to set up voice roll off. Notice how we use most of the same chips in a very similar way. The only difference is that we can set our own numbers here. So if you see a blue port, that means it's a float. Float means that you can set player decimals and integers. Integers are whole numbers. Now you know how to use player properties to create some fantastic experiences in your rooms. Now say it with me, ready? Be creative and give your rack room best.